In this video, we'd like to discuss how to bring in some EBSD data into Dream 3D and do some quick, simple analysis on that data. First, if you go over to the filter list and you type EBSD, it'll show you the various uh, filters that Dream 3D offers in order to bring in the data the most quick and simple way. Uh, we support EDAX, ANG, Oxford Instruments, CTF, and H5 EBSD files. So what you want to do is first figure out uh, the type of data file that you have. For this example demo, we're going to bring in uh, Oxford Instruments CTF data. Again, we can either drag the filter or we can double click the filter and it will be inserted into the pipeline at the bottom of the pipeline. So for our input file, we have a couple ready to go and Dream 3D does ship with some example data. We're going to use the T12MAI-2010 data set. So we can drag that over. You can also use the, uh, you can either do the normal drag and drop, use the select button, or if you want to actually just type the path or paste the path in, uh, you can do this. For data that is has a hexagonal crystal structure, you'll want to check this uh, checkbox, which is on by default, that will auto convert from Oxford Instruments uh, standard over to the EDAC standard, which Dream 3D uses. If you want more information, you can click the information button, uh, scroll down in this filter, and then there is a, uh, a short explanation that you can read on why you would want to and or not want to. So once we have the data in, typically how the EBSD systems work, uh, the sample reference frame and the crystal reference frame are not uh, coincident. So you typically want to uh, modify the reference frames so that they can become coincident and we call it the ro rotate Euler and rotate sample. Now some of these are needed and some of them are not. It also depends how your EBSD system is set up. By default again if you go to the help for each file we will give you what has typically been done in the past. You should check with your EBSD technician or your EBSD vendor to um, ensure that these would be the correct transformations. So for uh, Oxford Instruments data, they actually don't need a crystal re reference frame uh, rotation, but we do need a sample reference frame of 180 degrees about the 010 axis. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, drop that filter back out. We want 180 degrees about the 010 axis. Oops. Okay, so once that correction's done, probably the quickest and easiest thing to do is to generate some IPF colors. You notice we want this one, we don't want the one that says face, that's for something else. We just want this one that says generate IPF colors. So you throw this in, uh, IPFZ uh, is the default, so the 001, you can certainly change this to another dire direction, 100010 are typically good. We haven't done any thresholding, so we're gonna leave this checkbox unchecked for now. We need to select our oil angles. We can drag that over there. We need to select our phases in case we have a multi-phase material. You can drag back the other way. Uh, and also select the crystal structures, bring those in. We'll name the output array IPF color and you know it shows up in blue to say, hey, that's a new array. And then after that, you probably wanna write uh, a standard image file format. So you wanna do the image, ITK image writer. We want the XY plane. It's pretty standard. Uh, where you want the output file to go. Um, uh, IPFZ.ping. The file output file format will depend on what file extension you put in there. The standard ones are supported, TIFF, ping, uh, bitmap. And then you have to, you need to select the image data that we're, ac we're actually going to write. So that's gonna be the IPF colors that we just generated. So if we go ahead and start and run that pipeline, while that's running, we'll get our image together. And this is what the output IPF image looks like. This one's a pretty clean uh, EBSD map, but there are, there are some issues in there. And um, if you didn't get a good indexing, what you wanna do is start filtering those out to see exactly maybe what didn't get indexed. So let's add in a threshold filter quickly. So we're gonna say threshold objects advanced. We wanna put that in before the generate generating the IPF colors. 
And so we want a threshold on the actual scan data itself. So we call that the cell data. If error equals zero, this is a good point. And that's what we're saying in this threshold is we want to threshold out and we want to mark all the voxels that pass a certain criteria, i.e. that voxel has a value of error equals zero and mark that as true. And that's what this is going to do. So we can store this as the error mask. We simply call these thresholds a mask. You'll hear that referred to a lot when we do Dream 3D. So if you go back to the generate IPF colors now and you say apply to good elements only. And then now you note, now we have another data array that we need to uh, populate and we're gonna put the error mask in there. Another item that you might wanna visualize would be either the band slope or band contrast or any of these others. So what you can do in Dream 3D is generate a color table for those particular uh, data items. Select a preset that you would like to use. Select the data array. We're gonna go with band slope. Give it an output name. And then we can uh, quickly do a alt or option drag to copy the output image writer. Give that an output name. And update our inputs. And then run the filter. And this is what our band slope looks like. One of the last items that you might wanna do if you wanna have all of the data together in a little faster, more portable file format is you can create a Dream 3D file. Dream 3D data files are just based on the HDF5 file spec. So any HDF5 tools in any of the languages that you might want to use, including Python, MATLAB, Fortran, C, C++, Java, you name it, uh, would be available to you. And we're gonna write this XDMF file. So then when we start this and write it, is we're gonna get a pair of files. We're gonna get the Dream 3D, but we're gonna also get another one called .xdmf. What you can do with that file is you can load it up in Paraview. Paraview is a open source visualization put out by Kitware. You can go to paraview.org to download it. In this instance, we wanna use the XDMF reader, ignore these other two. And you can see all of the, all of the data that we would uh, bring in and then you can visualize, and then you can visualize it very, a little quicker than rather putting out images, band slope, band contrast, number of bands. So you can see here again, this is fully 3D, so you can twirl around it. Uh, you have the quick settings, number of bands, uh, error, you know, what your error looks like, basically what was indexed and what was not. If you choose IPF color, again, you need to go down and check this uncheck this map scalers because we've already generated the colors. Mean angular deviation, you wanna go back to mapping the scalers and you can take a look at that also. Again, this works just as good for 2D and 3D data sets.